Samson and Delilah Opera Samson and Delilah French, Samson at Delilah, Op. 47, is a grand opera in three acts and four scenes by Camel Saint Scenes to a French libretto by Ferdinand Lemaire. It is also similar to the oratorio in its dramaturgical and musical plan. It was first performed in Weimar at the Grosser Zogliches Grand Ducal Theatre, now the Staatskapel Weimar, on 2 December 1877 in a German translation. The opera is based on the biblical tale of Samson and Delilah found in Chapter 16 of the Book of Judges in the Old Testament. It is the only opera by St. Scenes that is regularly performed. The second act, Love Scene in Delilah's Tent, is one of the set pieces that define French opera. Two of Delilah's areas are particularly well known, Printemps qui commence, Spring begins, and Moncur a Suveritav, Ma my heart opens itself to your voice, also known as Softly Awakes My Heart, the latter of which is one of the most popular recital pieces in the mezzo-soprano slash contralto repertoire. Composition History In the middle of the 19th century, a revival of interest in choral music swept France, and St. Seems, an admirer of the oratorios of Handel and Mendelssohn, made plans to compose an oratorio on the subject of Samson, and Delilah as suggested by Voltaire's libretto Samson for Raymal. The composer began work on the theme in 1867, just two years after completing his first, and as then yet unperformed opera, Le Tambour d'Argent. St. Scenes had approached Ferdinand Lemaire, the husband of one of his wife's cousins, about writing a libretto for the oratorio, but Lemaire convinced the composer that the story was better suited to an opera. St. Scenes later wrote, A young relative of mine had married a charming young man who wrote verse on the side. I realized that he was gifted and had in fact real talent. I asked him to work with me on an oratorio on a biblical subject. An oratorio, he said, no, let's make it an opera, and he began to dig through the Bible while I outlined the plan of the work, even sketching scenes, and leaving him only the versification to do. For some reason I began the music with Act Two, and I played it at home to a select audience who could make nothing of it at all. After Lemaire finished the libretto, St. Scenes began actively composing Act Two of the opera, producing an aria for Dalila, a duet for Samson and Dalila, and some musical pieces for the chorus, some of which were later assigned to Act I during 1867-1869. From the very beginning, the work was conceived as a grand duet between Samson and Dalila set off against the approaching tempest. Although the orchestration was not yet complete, Act II was presented in a private performance in 1870 just prior to the outbreak of the Franco-Prussian War with St. Scenes playing the orchestral parts, which were largely improvised, on the piano. Composer Augusta Holmes Dalila, painter Henry Rignault Samson, and Romain Bassin High Priest rendered their roles from part books. In spite of many precedents, the French public reacted negatively to St. Scenes's intention of putting a biblical subject on the stage. The alarm on the part of the public caused him to abandon working further on the opera for the next few years. In the summer of 1872, not too long after the premiere of St. Scenes's second opera La Princess, John, the composer, went to Weimar to see the first revival of Wagner's Das Rheingold under the Baton of France list the former musical director of the Weimar Court Orchestra and Opera. Liszt was highly interested in producing new works by talented composers and persuaded St. Scenes to finish Samson and Delilah, even offering to produce the completed work at the Grand Ducal Opera House in Weimar. Encouraged, St. Scenes began composing Act I in late 1872 and worked on it sporadically for the next few years. He wrote a large amount of Act I and completed it during a trip to Algiers in 1874. Upon returning to France in 1875, St. Scenes presented Act I in Paris at the Théâtre du Chaplet in a similar format as the 1870 performance of Act II. The work was harshly received by music critics and failed to gain the public's interest. That same year acclaimed mezzo-soprano Paul Enviardot for whom St. Scenes wrote the role of Dalila, organized 
and performed in a private performance of Act II at a friend's home in Croissy with the composer at the piano. Viardot was a great admirer of the work, and she hoped that this private performance would encourage Hallenzier, the director of the Paris Opera who was in attendance, to mount a full production. Although St. Scenes completed the score in 1876, no opera houses in France displayed any desire to stage Samson at Dalila. List's sustained support, however, led to the work being mounted in Weimar in 1877. Performance History Premier in Weimar Although Liszt was no longer the musical director in Weimar, he still exerted a powerful influence at the Weimar court. Eduard Lassen, the director who followed Liszt at Weimar, owed much of his success to his celebrated predecessor, and Liszt used his influence to arrange the premiere of Samson at Dalla with Lassen on the podium during the 1877-1878 season. The libretto was duly translated into German for the production, and the opera's first performance was given on 2 December 1877 at the Grosser Zogliches Theatre Grand Ducal Theatre. Weyerdot was too old to sing Delilah, so the role was entrusted to August von Muller, a resident performer at the Weimar Opera House. Although a resounding success with the Weimar critics and audience, the opera was not immediately revived in other opera houses. Beginning of international popularity in the 1890s. After the numerous setbacks it suffered in its early years, Samson at Dallow finally began to attract the attention of the world's great opera houses during the 1890s. Although the next new production of Samson at Dallow was in Germany at the Hamburg, the opera received its Paris premiere at the Eden Theatre on 31 October 1890 with Rossine Bloch as Dalila and Talazek singing Samson once again, this time with a much warmer reception by Paris audiences. Over the next two years, performances were given in Bordeaux, Geneva, Toulouse, Nantes, Dijon, and Montpellier. The Paris Opera finally staged the opera on 23 November 1892 in a performance under the supervision of St. Scenes conducted by Edouard Collin with Blanche Deschamps Jehin as Dalila and Edmund Vergnet Au. Directed by Lepicida, the staging had costumes by Charles Bianchini and sets by Amable and Eugene Gardy Acts 1 and 2 and Eugene Carpizet Act 3. The performance was lauded by critics and spectators alike. Samson at Dallala also earned a great deal of popularity outside France during the 1890s. The opera debuted successfully in Monaco at the Opera de Monte Carlo on 15 March 1892. This was followed by the opera's United States premiere at Carnegie Hall in a concert version on 25 March 1892. The first staged performance of the opera in the U.S. was held at the French Opera House, New Orleans, on 4 January 1893. The first of many productions at the Metropolitan Opera in New York City was held on 2 February 1895, with Eugenia Mantelli as Dalla, Francisco Tamagno as Samson, and Paul Plankin portraying both Abam Lech and the Old Hebrew. There is some evidence that the sets for the Met's production had been taken from some of their other operas, and at the second performance, that season the work was given in concert, with the ballet sequences omitted. In this form the work traveled to Boston, where it was performed on 3 March 1895. The opera made its premiere in Italy at the Titro Pagliano Titro Verdi Florence on 26 March 1892. The opera was given in Venice at the Titro La Fenice on 8 March 1893, with Elisa Persini as Dalla and Augusto Brogi as Samson. The work was first given at La Scala on 17 January 1895, with René Vidal as Dalla and Emmanuel Lafarge as Samson. This was followed by its first performance at the Titro Reggio di Torino on 6 January 1897, with Alice Cusini and Irma de Spagni alternating as Dalla and Hector Dupurin as Samson. The work was first performed at the Titro Reggio di Parma that same year and was mounted at the Titro Comunale di Bologna in 1899. In England, the opera was first performed on 25 September 1893 at the Royal Opera House, Covent Garden. 
Although the company planned on performing the work in a fully staged production, the Lord Chamberlain objected to a biblical work being mounted and the company was forced to present the opera in a concert version. It was not staged in London until 1909 when the ban was finally lifted. Louise Kirkby Lund portrayed Dalila, and Charles Fontaine portrayed Samson in the 1909 production. Subsequently, Paul France replaced Fontaine in the protagonist's role, earning the composer's praise for both the quality of his voice and his interpretation. 20th and 21st Century Performance History By 1906, Samson at Dalila had received more than 200 performances internationally. The opera has continued to remain moderately popular since and, while not being among the most frequently performed operas, the work has become a part of the standard opera performance repertory at most major opera houses. The opera has been revived numerous times, not only in Europe and North America, but also in South America, Australia, and Asia. While none of St. Scenes's later operas suffered the tribulations endured by Samson, at Dalla during its early years, none of his other works have achieved the same enduring success either. In North America, French contralto Jean Gerville Reach is largely credited for popularizing the work in the United States and Canada during the early 20th century. Reach first performed the role of Delilah with the Manhattan Opera Company in New York City in 1908 and went on to sing the role several more times over the next seven years, including performances in Philadelphia, Boston, Chicago, and Montreal for the Canadian premiere in 1915. The Metropolitan Opera revived the opera in its 1915-1916 season with Margaret Matsonor as Delilah, Enrico Caruso as Samson, and Pasquale Amato as the High Priest. Since then, the company has staged productions of the opera at least once every decade, giving more than 200 performances of the work. Placido Domingo performed as Samson in the 1981 San Francisco Opera production co-starring Shirley Verrett under Julius Rudel and at the Metropolitan Opera's 1998 production with Olga Borodina. More recent productions of the opera by the Metropolitan have been in 2006 with Marina Dimashenko and Olga Borodina alternating as Delilah and in 2018 with Alina Garinka and Roberto Alagna. The Lyric Opera of Chicago gave their first performance of the opera in November 1962, with Rita Gore as Delilah and Hans Cart as Samson. The company has revived the work numerous times since then, most recently in their 2003-2004 season, with Olga Borodina as Dalla and Jose Cura as Samson. Likewise, the San Francisco Opera has staged the opera ten times during its history, giving its first performance in 1925, with Marguerite Dalvers and Fernand Anso in the principal roles, and its most recent performance in 2008, with Bordina and Clifton Forbes. Samson at Dallow became a consistent presence in the opera houses of Europe. By 1920, the Paris Opera alone had given more than 500 performances of the opera. In the decades after World War Roman II, it was less often heard by European audiences, but since the 1980s it has regained much of its former continental popularity. Recent European productions include performances at La Scala, Milan in 2002, Domingo, and Bordina, the Royal Opera House, Covent Garden in 2004, Denise Graves and Jose Cura, the Royal Swedish Opera in 2008, Anna Larsson, and Lars Cleveman. Throughout its history, Samson at Dalla has served as a star vehicle for many singers. The role of Delilah is considered to be one of the great opera roles for the mezzo-soprano. Libretto Although the libretto of Samson at Dalla is taken from Chapter 16 of the Book of Judges, the opera does not include the accounts of Samson's heroic deeds which earned him both fame and leadership among the Hebrews. The accounts of Samson's slaying of a lion and his triumph over 1,000 Philistines while wielding only the jawbone of an ass are omitted. St. Scenes and his librettist most likely made this choice, so the story would concentrate on Dalila. 
Samson, therefore, is presented as an inspiring leader rather than the almost supernatural hero of the Bible. It is his vulnerable, tender heart and his susceptibility to the protestations of love from a dissembling woman. Delilah is portrayed as a manipulative, conniving, ruthless woman bent on revenge. Samson's numerous attempts to conceal the secret of his strength in the biblical account are only referenced by Dalila in her duet with the high priest in the opera, and the revelation that his strength resides in his hair occurs off stage. The opera includes some material not found in the Bible, such as the death of Avam Lech in Act I. Roles Synopsis Place Gazas as Gazas Gazas, place, gazas, place, gazas, place, gazas. Time, c. 1150 B.C. Act 1. A square in Gaza at night. In a square outside the temple of Dagon, a group of Hebrews beg Jehovah for relief from their bondage to the Philistines in a melancholy chorus due to Israel, God of Israel, which leads into a few news. Avon's Vu Nas cites Renverses, we have seen our cities overturned. Samson tries to revive the Israelites' morale and faith in God Aretes. O mess freers, stop! O my brothers, in a rousing area set against the chorus's continuous prayer. Abam Lech? The Philistine governor appears and taunts the Israelites, saying that they are helpless because their god has abandoned them. He further states that his god, Dagon, is far superior si diu que vater vwe implore this god that your voice implores. The Hebrews cower in fear before Abamlech until Samson incites them into defiant action. Enraged, Abamlech attacks an unarmed Samson with his sword. Samson manages to wrest the sword from Abam Lech and kills him. Afraid of what might now happen, the Hebrews flee, abandoning Samson. The high priest of Dagon comes from the Philistine temple and curses the Hebrews in Samson's prodigious strength. A messenger arrives and informs the high priest that the Hebrews are destroying the harvest. He responds with a further curse that alludes to his plot to utilize Dalila's beauty, to outwit Samson's strength, Quenfinu, Compagni, and fame, tra his son Amr, finally an infamous companion, betray his love. As dawn breaks, the Hebrews lift up a humble prayer to God in a style reminiscent of Plainchant. Out of the temple emerges Dalila along with several priestesses of Dagon. As they walk down the temple steps, they sing of the pleasures of spring. Dalila engages seductively with Samson, proclaiming that he has won her heart and bids him to come with her to her home in the Valley of Sarek. As she tries to charm him, a trio forms as an old Hebrew warns of the danger this woman presents, and Samson prays for God's protection from Dalila's charms. In an attempt to seduce Samson away from his leadership of the Israelite uprising, Dalila and the priestesses begin a sexually charged dance for him, accompanied by a tambourine. After the dance, Dalila sings how spring is blossoming all around her, yet, in her heart, she feels like it is still winter printemps quick commence spring begins. As Samson struggles with his desire for Dalila, the old Hebrew repeats his cautionary plea. His warning, however, is made in vain, and the curtain closes as Samson meets Delilah's gaze with every intention of going to her nearby dwelling. Act Two. Delilah's retreat in the Valley of Sarek, 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 knows that Samson is entranced with her and will come to her instead of leading the revolution against the Philistines. Sitting on a rock outside the entrance to her retreat, she sings triumphantly about her power to ensnare Samson. She says that all of his strength is hopeless to withstand love's onslaught Amr, the ins aider ma fabless love, come help my weakness. Distant lightning is seen as the high priest arrives to report that Samson and the Hebrews have conquered the Philistines. He attempts to achieve Samson's capture by offering Dalila gold, but she refuses, saying she cares not for money but only for revenge. 
her desire to hurt samson is motivated solely by her loyalty to her gods and her hatred for the hebrews dalila and the high priest sing a duet expressing their mutual abhorrence for samson and the hebrews dalila vows to discover the secret of samson's strength now alone dalila contemplates her chances of success samson intent on taking his place as the leader of the hebrew revolt emerges to say his last farewell as distant lightning is once again seen in an attempt to close the trap which she has set for samson dalla tells samson seductively that she is completely his if he wants her she begs him to respond to her caresses hoping that he will finally let go of all other things and concentrate completely on her his admission g t m introduces her main area monker isuveratov why my heart opens to your voice which becomes a duet on the second verse when samson joins her in song now that dalla has him in her power she feigns disbelief in his constancy and demands that he show his love by confiding in her the secret of his strength samson hears rolling thunder again which now seems like a warning from god and refuses dalla weeps and scorns samson and runs into her dwelling samson is momentarily torn but then follows dalila inside not long afterward having finally learned that the secret of samson's strength is his long hair she calls to hidden philistine soldiers who rush into capture and blind samson act three the city of gaza scene one in a dungeon at gaza net gaza dungeon at gaza his hair shorn and now blind and shackled Samson is turning a mill wheel and praying for his people who will suffer for his sin. He hears their voices, echoing the Hebrews' lament from Act I. Overcome with remorse, Samson offers his life in sacrifice, while the Hebrews are heard in the distance lamenting his fate. Scene two in the Temple of Dagon. A musical interlude is played as the scene changes to the Temple of Dagon, where the Philistines are preparing a sacrifice to commemorate their victory. The priests and priestesses of Dagon sing softly, reprising the song to spring from Act I. The music turns savage as the priests dance a wild bacchanal. Following the dance, Samson enters led by a boy. He is ridiculed by the high priest and the crowd. Dalla taunts Samson further by recounting to him the details of her devious plot in a variant of her love song. When the priests try to force him to kneel before Dagon, he asks the boy to lead him to the two main pillars of the temple, then telling the child to flee. Samson prays to God to restore his strength and pushes down the pillars and the temple with them, crushing himself and his enemies. The curtain falls. Recordings Note, cat is short for the label's catalog number where available.